Welcome back to Armani. Today, we'll delve into the history of the only small size $500 gold certificate ever issued by the United States. Between 1862 and 1928, the U.S. Treasury released what is popularly known as large size currency. Distinctly bigger than today's familiar bills, they measured an impressive 7.42 by 3.125 inches. The large size bills, though beautiful and rich in history, were not exactly user friendly. They were cumbersome for tellers, got jammed in the innovative cash registers, and took up a lot of space. Recognizing these challenges, the U.S. Treasury decided it was time for a change. And so, in 1928, the U.S. started issuing the small size currency we are familiar with today, more compact at 6.14 by 2.61 inches. Since 1865, the Treasury had been issuing gold certificates. These notes were symbolic representations of actual gold coins held by the government, allowing holders to redeem them for their equivalent value in gold coins. Distinctive and unparalleled, the series of 1928 stands as the only small-size $500 gold certificate ever issued. This noteworthy note prominently displays the portrait of President William McKinley. During McKinley's leadership, the United States entered the Spanish-American War following the explosion of the USS Maine in Havana Harbor. Cuba. The conflict spanned from April 21 to August 13, 1898, and the U.S. came victorious. McKinley's presidency, marked by significant events, took a sorrowful turn when he was assassinated on September 14, 1901, just eight months into his second term. Adding to the note's distinctiveness, the serial numbers and the Treasury seal dazzled in brilliant yellow ink. Furthermore, the serial numbers adopted a standard format, an initial letter, followed by eight digits, and capped off with an end letter. The note's promise read, This certifies that there have been deposited in the Treasury of the United States of America $500 in gold coin payable to the bearer on demand. To the right of McKinley's portrait, the number 500 was prominently printed in gray. On the left, overlaying the Treasury seal, were two crucial elements. The first identified the note as a gold certificate. The second provided its obligation, stating, This certificate is a legal tender in the amount thereof in payment of all debts and dues public and private. Two series identifications frame McKinley's portrait, one curved in a half-moon shape at the upper left and the other positioned to its lower right, situated beneath Washington, D.C. A bold 500 graced each corner of the note. These distinctive notes bore the engraved signatures of the Treasurer of the United States, Walter Woods, and the Secretary of the Treasury, Andrew Mellon. With the introduction of these small size notes, the register of the Treasury's signature was notably absent, marking a departure from previous currency designs. The note's reverse was elegantly simple. It prominently displayed seven instances of the number 500, accompanied by the inscriptions the United States of America and $500. The U.S. Treasury issued a total of 420,000 gold certificates of this denomination, representing a combined value of $210 million. In response to the mounting pressures of the Great Depression, President Franklin Roosevelt's administration enacted the Act of March 9, 1933. This legislation mandated the confiscation of all gold bullion, coins, and gold certificates, making private ownership of these items illegal. This policy was reaffirmed with the Gold Reserve Act, passed on January 30, 1934. This pivotal act empowered the government to assume control over the entire U.S. gold supply. As a direct result, the circulation of gold certificates was no longer for the general public. Furthermore, this change marked the end of currency redemption in gold. Decades later, on April 24, 1964, Secretary of the Treasury Clarence Douglas Dillon repealed the long-standing restrictions on the acquisition and possession of gold certificates. For the first time in over 30 years, collectors could once again legally own these pieces of rich American history. We hope you've enjoyed this journey through a unique piece of American monetary history. Stay curious!